of African American hair. Uh, in order to look, well, how many of you saw that Malcolm X movie? Where and remember the scene where he says, "Oh, it looks white." Well, that was uh, a, a, that was lipstick on a pig moment, where, in which a, a, an oppressed minority or a put upon is uh, uh, lipsticking themselves to try uh, to try to gain legitimacy. Huh, that's an interesting point. Yeah. So it's I mean this guy's thinking. Yeah, there is a lot. These two are just sad, but this guy has tapped into something that is that is very much a part of. Uh, our political and social history. Yeah, there is a lot of political and social artwork involved with this show. It really does have a huge fan base in regards to thinking like that. And all of this drama, all of this anger, all of the confusion was because of an alteration to a cartoon, Pegasus. So Hasbro actually did take action shortly after, in which a uh, spokeswoman of Hasbro, Nicola Angelo, explained, The My Little Pony Friendship is Magic series has always been about acceptance and inclusion. And the series strives to convey that through the playful antics of a diverse, cares, diverse cast of characters. Some viewers felt that the aspects of the episode of The Last Roundup did not stay true to the core message of friendship, which is the heart and soul of the series. And they clarified that it's only to a single episode. Basically, they felt that the attitude towards the character, including how the episode, including how the name Derby was used, wasn't as appropriate as they originally intended. However, they did keep her in the show, making her still the Easter egg of the series. These are in later episodes, including the season two finale, The Royal Wedding. <laughs> as you can see, she's still there. She still has the dark dyes. But why did this happen? Why did the alteration occur in the first place? Well, for one thing, Derby was originally a slur term. I think the origin of it was Trey Parker and Matt Stone of South Park. Rod Schneider is Derpty Derp. And even though that wasn't the intention of the character Derpy Hooves, many people still see Derpy as a slur, which it originally was. And even if the name has a different meaning now, not everyone will notice that, especially those who aren't aware of the character beforehand. Also, Hasbro is only supposed to appeal to kids first. While they appeal to all different kinds of families, and they definitely show they can appeal to adults, it is originally a kids program, and they have different standards. Bronies don't really have any say in the show. Derby was, and will always be, a Hasbro character, and even though Bronies did help develop her in the way she is now, it's still, they still don't really have any say in the show, and the control of Joe have all the control of her. Also, some people were offended by this. Now, there were some testimonies from fans saying that they know people with disabilities who really did look up to Derpy and thought she was a great character. But there were those who were offended, and that is the big issue here. And also, Hasbro has had problems with unintentional name problems before. The most recent example was in 2010 with the character Spastic from Transformers. Because it turned out that in Great Britain, spastic was a slur towards cerebral palsy. And after a lawsuit was made, the toy was pulled off the market in Britain. Yeah, but that, uh, in my era in elementary school, spastic was a, you know, it, a term used for, you know, nerdy, nervous, spastic kid, <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. As you can see, Hasbro has had this problem before, and so because of how they dealt with it here, it shouldn't be any surprise that they would deal with the same way with the name Derpy. So, what are my final thoughts? Eh, whatever. Derpy is still in the show. While she's while she might not be seen as a character who's talking or is known by her name, she's still in the background of the show as she was before. So nothing's really changed. The studio still loves and really appreciates the Brony fandom. And a lot of writers on the show, animators, and especially the voice actors like Tara Strong have really taken a shine to the Brony community and really love that they're giving the show such support. The unedited episode of The Last Roundup is still easy to find. You can find all of the episodes of the two seasons up on YouTube. The first season is available on Netflix. I think season two is going to be available on Netflix as well soon. And I think it's actually more easy to find the unedited episode of this than it is to find the iTunes edit. The show is still awesome. I mean, despite what people say, Derby is not the reason the show is good. It was good because of the writing, and because the show took itself seriously. It made itself more than a show for little girls, and Derby
it was just a nice addition. And also, the fandom has really stopped really going that big about the derpy thing. After the announcement from Hasbro, they realized that they were making a big overblown proportions over it. And many have apologized on behalf of the community for their actions. And they still love the show. In fact, last weekend was a season two finale in which was called the Royal Wedding. Rating Shed was their highest rating show ever on the channel since it premiered. And if anyone is curious about the work in Warren Faust, she's also she left after season one to try to work on a personal project called Milky Way and the Galaxy Girls, which more people should check out. You can join the Source Sisterhood at MilkyWayandTheGalaxyGirls.com. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, a couple of yeah, okay. <laughs> questions. Um, now, what conclusion do you draw then ethically? Uh, um, in other words, what kind of responsibility does a production company have to its fan base in regard to the portrayal of um, Minor minority groups or other uh, groups that might be culturally uh, challenged. Well, the fact is, even though My Little Pony is popular among the adult fan base, it's still a show primarily for kids and young kids. And because of that, there are different standards than would with most other shows. So would you say then that that they made the ethically right choice to edit that character for the show? Um, yeah, overall, I, I can understand why they chose to add the character, and they did in a way that still showed that they do care about the Brony fan base, but still making sure they don't offend the kid fan base as well. Now, another uh, thing, just because I'm, uh, you know, PhDs were trained in close reading, um, could that final scene not be interpreted as when she comes up out of the hole and her eyes are straight that they've been knocked that way. In other cartoons, you fall into the hole, you come up and your eyes are dirt. The dirt eyes fall into the hole, comes up and her eyes are straight. I'm not quite sure about some of the decisions, but I'm not quite sure why they did the animation changes on the character because I don't feel the dirt eyes were that big of an indicator of being offensive to the mentally challenged as much as the voice was. However, uh, that was the action of Studio B, and right, but, but it would be interesting to find out from the uh, the and now that was a change, however. Yeah. But um, it actually seems to make sense to me, given what happens to other cartoon characters when they fall into holes or things blow up. Um, True. Although the voice change is much more difficult to, in other words, that that's. I, I could see arguing the eye change uh, in a completely different uh, kind of a literary tra trajectory um, as as the voice. But anyway, all right, good job. Thank you. Is, uh, Ace is good. Ace, oh, that's right. Ace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 